Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to what is this episode 38 of Who the F Did I Demand the the F Did I Marry uh Peach Tree Edition Peach Georgia Buckhead Whatever ATL fill in the blanks. Y'all, let me tell y'all something. Anybody that was out there, first of all, let's address the people in the comments because there's so much to talk about. Portia William filed for divorce. The people that still want to believe Portia won and didn't get con was saying, no, she got in, got out, and got the bag, baby. You are confusing Portia Williams with Mr. Simon Gabodia, baby. He was the original city girl. Baby, Simon was running game. He was the original city boy before cities existed when there were just villages and towns and scarlet letters, baby. We got to get into this. If you guys haven't heard, Portia Williams filed for divorce. Portia Williams fans were like, and again, you can be a Portia fan, all right? This is a judgment-free zone, right? But seriously, you can be a Portia fan if you want. But Portia's fans were like, she got in, she got out. She know that y'all want her to be this. Y'all want her to be, did anybody see the usual suspects? Y'all want her to be Kaiser Sosa so bad, and she not. She's not even one of the usual suspects. She's the person that the police send to go get coffee and she gets lost in the office closet trying to make the coffee machine give her a cafe con leche. Y'all, listen, trying to make the copier literally foam her some milk. That's who Portia is. And there's no shame in that. But can we call a spade a spade? Y'all, when it and they keep twisting reality because they want her to win so bad. It's like the way when she got into that bra that 360 contract on Bravo saying that she can't do any scripted television, hosting gigs, acting modeling she can't do nothing outside of Bravo Universal. But NBC Universal didn't promise her any shows. I said y'all that sound like a 360 deal. That sound like what every recording artist is trying to get out of when you can only work with one set of people, but they don't want to promise you anything. All right. They were twisting. Mm -mm, this is historical. Historical what? Historical dumbness. Anyway, listen, as can be expected, and this is what we need to actually look at. Okay. Um, a, a lot of people are wondering, did Portia know? Did she know what Simon was up to? Did she know that when she was fronting the bags, the cars, the jewelry, right? There was a whole slew of people looking behind, talking about some, where he get that money from? Because he owe us a million. He owe you a million. He owe us 440,000. He owe you 440,000. Maybe he just owe me 30,000. Maybe I can go get that money. Oh, also, you guys, I don't know if I'm going to do it tonight because I have, I'm going live later. I'm going to go live three times tonight to talk about Diddy, to talk about the royal stuff. But I do have a special live I am going to do tomorrow. I'm going to make it a members-only chat. Y'all, I think I figured out where Simon got his money from. I think I figured out. I put on my little detective hat. I pulled out my magnifying glass. I got on my Nancy Drew would it do hood Scooby-Doo mystery, y'all. I think I figured out where Simon gets his money from. And baby, when I say... That Portia should be very worried. Baby Portia should be very worried. And I will say this. Simon, Sip Cold Petroleum, Sip Cold Petroleum, Sim Cold Petroleum. I did a little deep dive because, baby, sometimes the things are not just on the court documents. Sometimes it's the documents that you mentioned in. But you know what? I'll leave it at that, and I'll do a, a separate live about it. If I have time, energy tonight, I'll do it. But y'all know me. I got so much to do. Anyway, let's get back into how Portia realized that Simon was playing in her bank account and the way that now this is pretty much proof that Portia paid for her wedding and Portia's been paying for all the expenses and Simon's been telling her, my money is tied up and I will get you. If you pay me a dollar today, I will surely pay you $10 tomorrow. That's how you know. Y'all, let's get into these reports. Now, if you guys don't know, P Portia filed for divorce, okay? A lot of people that want to think Portia is this criminal mastermind. I said, what is going on in your life that Portia Williams is the mastermind in all this? Now, again, I'm not saying Portia's dumb. I am saying that when it comes to men, Portia be having blinders on. It's like she can't see clearly. It's like she just can't see, right? Okay. 
she filed for divorce. A lot of people were saying, no, they just doing it like Nene and Greg because they love each other. And I said, Portia hired Jenny Mai's divorce attorney. Portia did not blow up her whole life. Leave in shame. Have people laughing at you. Let the immigration officer know where that mofo stay at, lay his head at. Do all the stuff that literally gets the feds directly on your husband. All for a Bravo storyline. Excuse me. However, the heyday of Real Al Housewives of Atlanta has been over for over six years. I don't know. Maybe, you know, it's like somebody that like wanted to date the high school football, uh, uh, football a quarterback. And, you know, he was always fine. And then you see him 50 years later and he got a beer belly, this, that, and that third. And you still see him like the high school quarterback, a quarterback. You guys, let it go. Bravo is not that important. Housewives fame is not that important, especially when you can go to jail. Y'all really think somebody will blow up their lives for a storyline like Jen Shaw did, like Teresa Giudizzi did, like Erica Garotti did? Y'all are tripping. I think a lot of people don't know how high stakes what Portia has is involved in and what Simon involved with is that, baby, you don't want attention at all. Now, here's the thing. The first clue, I'm going to go through everything, then y'all make up your own mind. That pretty much led everything to be where it was, for one. And let's just be real. Y'all can't be serious about thinking that Portia married Simon for love. Y'all really think that if Simon was working, cleaning the bathrooms at BP Mobile or whatever gas station they got down in Atlanta, y'all really think that Portia would be on her knees, giving him rings, doing this, giving her a credit card to my baby, buy what you want, shopping, doing this, and my man, thank you to my man, and learning how to let Simon touch her lips. Because y'all remember the first year of the relationship, Portia used to treat Simon, kiss Simon like this, right? Y'all ready for this? This is Simon, right? Imagine the phone is going like this. Because Simon, for some reason, every time he kissed, it was, it was, I can't even do it. Anyway, y'all know the lips. Y'all know the vibes. Portia, time will be like, and Portia would be like, she would always have body language. The first year and a half of the relationship, her body language, she always had her hands against his chest, pushing him away. Her groin was moved away. And she looked like she was like, oh, this tequila and cigar stink. Oh my God. Right? She looked like she was always uh, passing him some trident, Hubba Bubba, whatever you want to call it. Cementos, the fresh maker. Tell me I'm MF and Lion. Look at those old pictures of Portia and Simon. You cannot tell me that if Simon was working at, and it's no shade. If you want a man that's successful, there's no shade. Baby, Portia's the type of person, brokenness does not turn her on. If Por you really honestly believe that out of all the men in Atlanta, and she is Portia Peach Juice Williams, that if Simon was cleaning the bathrooms, in the gas station, ain't no shade in doing that. I'm just saying, because Portia is in love with the lifestyle. She would have looked twice at that man. That man could have literally given her a kidney and Portia would have found a reason to be like, you know, you know, it would have been that old prayer. Please God, send me a man, send me any man. I don't care, I trust you. And if God comes up and you're like, not you, please God, just send me any man, any man, just give me a sign. That was would have been Portia if Simon was broke. Now that said, because here's the thing, I'm about to tell y'all how Simon was playing in her bank accounts and what the proof is, or at least as far as I see it. Okay, and this is my opinion based upon information and belief based off of blog articles, Instagram posts, and of course what the streets are saying and a little speculation thrown in, right? If this, so because we have to see what the truth is. Portia married Simon for money. Now she might have fallen in love with him because she loved how secure she felt with the lifestyle. She loved how secure he made her feel with the lifestyle, but make no mistake, just like a man that marries a woman only for her beauty, baby, as soon as he decides you're not beautiful anymore, it don't matter whether it happened at 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, or 80. As soon as he decides that you are not beautiful, that you do not make his heart sing, he will leave if he does not love you. He will leave and find somebody that is beautiful. It's the same way Portia married Simon for money. And now that that money is not around, or more importantly, it can't be freely spent, 
again, I do maintain Simon's broke. My definition of broke is if you don't got legal money, baby, you don't got money. I don't count scammer money as money. That's make-believe. That's invisible. And everything I buy with scammer money is either going to get repossessed or worse, I'm going to be sitting in a jail cell literally being like, do, 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 because I had to front with some Dolce & Gabbana, some Fendi, some Louis, some Gucci, some Prada. I do not count scammer money as real money. I don't care how many Birkins you have. That, that can all go away. Baby, the only thing I count as money is things that I never have to worry about the Fed snatching from me. And I can leave it to my whole generation if I want. So anyway, right? So of course, Portia married him for his money. He married Portia for her fame and her access, right? Um, and whatever else, okay? Now, Portia filed for divorce. Portia could have made the divorce private. She hired the same lawyer Jenny Ma used. That is the lawyer that she also used with Cordell, okay? The lawyer immediately, immediately, and I quote, asked for the prenup to be upheld. Now, a lot of people were like, no, what are you talking about? Blah, 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 blah. She asked for that. Baby, she wants her money. She wants her money with the prenup. Let me tell y'all three things. And let me make a note of it because I keep whatever, right? One. One. Let me tell you what was really behind that motion and what that really means. It means that Portia is scared that Simon's debts are going to become her debts. She also wants Simon to whatever he said he would give her, she wants that agreed to, okay? But the only problem is, Portia, how are you going to get blood from a stone? Because like everybody else has pointed out, wherever Simon's getting his money, wherever he's getting it from, and I do know where it's coming from in America, but if money is coming from overseas, baby, Cardi B is still trying to get her four million from Tasha K. She and, and Cardi B is spending millions of dollars of lawyers to rip through everything Cardi B has. I'm sorry, Tasha K has to find out where her offshore accounts are so she can get into those offshore accounts. Baby, Portia ain't got Cardi B money. Portia ain't got Cardi B's time. Portia ain't got Cardi B's lawyers. And Portia ain't got Cardi B's sense. So we're going to talk about that about. Even if that prenup is upheld, and this is how Portia don't realize she was scammed. Where are you getting the money from? A court order in the USA saying this man owes you, let's just say he signed, and this is the thing that would have made me be like, before you sign a prenup, everybody that has a brain always asks their spouses, whether you're man or woman, all right, you signed a prenup. Let me see your finances. Let me see your finances before we even make the prenuptial agreement. I need to see all of your finances, all of your bank statements, so I know what I'm agreeing to. You know that if you do not get that information, that a prenup could be invalidated. Because if I said, oh, you only have to give me, I don't know, $200 a month until the day I die on a prenup, and I find out you're worth billions, and you told me you were only worth 100,000, it's like, no, I made an agreement for that 100,000, not the billions, right? So it, it can invalidate a prenup. So both parties, if they're smart, say, let me see your bank accounts. Let me see your bank accounts. You pass them to your lawyer and baby, yeah, I love you. But you have the lawyer verify what is real. Now, here's the thing. I get it. If you love someone, are you really going to have your bank account and accountant verify whether they gave you real bank st card statements, this and that? Maybe not. Because when you love someone, there's a certain amount of trust. But when you are a, what appears to be a very opportunistic, money motivated person, and I'm not shading you, baby, whatever motivates you, love, money is not my life, it's yours. I, I'm not judging Portia for that. But when you are motivated by money, when you have given up all six of your bags, you get just got signed by the biggest talent agency, CAA, you have a book coming out, you now have your own spinoff, you're on at that point the highest rated reality TV show, and you have a great public image, and you are about to be rebranded into a social justice warrior and get into that Tamika Mowry bag. Y'all remember when Cadillac was like, I stand with my ancestors' tradition. That's why I love my new Cadillac Escalade. See how smooth it ride? Remember when they were getting all those endorsements? My ancestors refused to uh, pick cotton 
That's why we only like Kellogg's Corn Flakes. The first people that emancipated my great grandmother. Remember when all those corporations were playing in our face, exploiting anything that had to do with black heritage to get us to buy some stuff and Tamika marrying them? No shade to them. We're the first ones up there, you know, the, the, the legacy of greatness. Cadillac. Portia Williams was about to get into that bag, right? She had, I mean, she got the looks. She knows how to act on camera. And she got that Hosea legacy, right? She was about to get in all those bags. Now, Portia gave it up because she didn't want to work. But my whole point is, if you are money-based, if you are giving up known bags for a man who you know you're only with him for the money, and a man that, it wasn't just me, a lot of people on the streets were telling Portia who the F is Simon. Dennis told Portia who the F is Simon. I, what? He got money? I mean, I guess. Portia's Mr. Big, the Africans that Portia knew, some in biblical terms, were like, Simon Gabodia, huh? I, I mean, I don't know. We don't know him, right? And you got the ex-wife going on every single channel saying he don't got money like that. Some days we had 20000 to blow in the club. Other days we were broke. Simon don't got money from that. I've been to his office. His printer's sitting on the floor. You got all these people telling you all this stuff. Now, true, the ex-wife could have been hating. But me, I would have been like, but let's make sure she is hating. Because I got all these different data points saying things might be a little fugazi. Let me go and investigate. It's not that I don't trust you, but it's, listen, I'm reading the Yelp reviews and I'm not saying you don't make the best red velvet cake this side of the Mason-Dixie line. I am saying that five people said they got food poisoning. So before I do my to-go order, let me do a little research. Let me do a deep dive into the Yelp reviews. Porsche didn't want to do that. You had people warning you. You had people warning you. But again, like I said, Porsche counsel for eyes. So getting back to what that was, Portia thought that she had Simon because, and I'm wondering, did Portia have a lawyer help her with the prenup? Because Simon was willing to sign off on whatever. Because I think he's a little scammer. I heard that Portia wanted something like 5 million, 10 million, or whatever. Hold on, y'all. Let me plug this camera in. One second. One second. Okay. I'm back. I heard that, listen, this is just what I heard on the street, right? That Portia wanted $5 million. She actually planted a story in on, like, remember they were saying Portia's in a $5 million negotiation with Real Housewives of Atlanta. Girl, you were on Real Housewives of Atlanta season, what, 12? You couldn't save it. And they wrapped that whole storyline around you. Miss me with Bravo's paying you $5 million, right? This is before Portia family values. So, um, and they realized that playing her got more views than having her as a sweetheart. Okay. So anyway, um, Portia got in this struggle with Simon. And one thing Simon going to do, a scammer's going to scam forever. Even though it was all monopoly money, he knew he had to make it just a little. So they got into this huge negotiation. It was all this back and forth. He agreed to give her a lump sum. Let's say it was 3 million. Let's say, say it was 5 million. Let's say it was 10 million. Let's say it was a hundred million. And all Portia's people are like, yeah, she got to where the money reside because they need to make it worth it. They would do something reckless, like snake a coworker, sleep with their coworkers thing, do all this stuff, talk about some love, because at the end of the day, they so tired of working nine to five and working the graveyard shift that they would do anything to get ahead, including anyone's man. Again, I'm not judging but that's what it is. And they want to know that maybe they thought about it and they didn't have the courage to do it, but Portia did. So they want Portia to live their dreams, okay? I get it, I get it, I get it. What I'm saying is any normal person knows that when you do a prenup, this is why it's so important to investigate and make sure these bank statements they give you are real if you are doing a prenup. Because Simon could have signed a contract for a hundred million, Portia, it is not even worth the paper it's written on if you cannot collect. It's not worth the paper it is written on if you cannot collect. Where are you getting the three million from? Simon's baby's mom to Ziamara, Ziamara, that is his daughter that Simon used to keep on his hip, right? 
something happened. She ain't coming around no more. It's just PJ and the boys. I don't know what happened with that. It could just be coincidence. Maybe the mom said stop posting her. I don't know. They are currently homeless. Well, I should say housing insecure, which is to me homeless. Being able to stay in an Airbnb just means that you have enough income that you're not on the street, but you can't save up for a down payment to actually get a home. So every month you looking on Airbnb, trying to find a cheap alternative for the next month, because maybe the Airbnb is like, sorry, you got to get out of here on the 25th. We have new things. Again, some people could say that's not a bad way to live. I would never want that stress, but is that a way that a millionaire's favorite child lives? You can't even break them off. They did a GoFundMe for about 8,000, which is first and last and security for an apartment. Simon couldn't give her that money. They had to do a GoFundMe. I know people are like, oh, she's trying to play victim. What you doing working, working at New York Fashion Week because she is a model or something? Do y'all realize with Housing Insecure that most people that are housing insecure or we call them transient homeless actually work jobs? The kids go to school. They are members of society, but they are too embarrassed to let anybody know that they're staying at short-term Airbnbs. They're staying at short-term motels. They're sleeping in their car. The fact of the fact that a millionaire's baby's mom that is not on Crack Rock, Crack Rock, is doing a GoFundMe and Simon don't got the money to make sure that his only daughter, only daughter, got a secure roof over the head. And I heard some people say, so what? That's a, child support isn't a check. And I said, ooh, tell me your man or your woman. No, tell me your man got, got stepchildren and you can't stand them. Tell me your man is paying another woman 50% of his earnings and it makes you mad. Child support is not a blank check. If that's the case, the child can go live with the mother, can go live at Simon's house until the mother gets on her feet. Y'all really want a woman and a, a, a daughter and her mother, and the mother raises her 95% of the time and looks like to be a good mother, is separate. Y'all want to separate those two so she can go struggle to get eight, 9,000 while the child gets relocated with, in a new household, with new in a new school district and make new friends and go through all that mental trauma. Just because you mad that your man had an outside baby and got to pay her, you got to pay for the baby. Yo, you giving Khloe Kardashian teas. I told everybody y'all need to start deleting this. Y'all giving Khloe Kardashian teas. Y'all realize that the women, if we stuck together, people like Simon and Kabodi wouldn't be able to get over. Y'all realize these men that are dogging y'all up, y'all realize that we just stuck together. It wouldn't be like that. But anyway, why would Simon do that? First of all, she can't do that because Simon don't even live in the U.S. Simon lives, who knows, Costa Rica, Dubai, who knows? Oddly enough, I did find out that Dubai doesn't have an extradition treaty with the United States, which means if you are convicted abstentia for a crime such as immigration fraud, such as, I don't know, um, fraud, credit card fraud, if you are convicted in Dubai, um, they do not automatically deport you. Now, if it's a high profile case, then boys in blue will run up and get you, but they do not automatically deport you back to the US. I wonder, I wonder, abstent, being convicted in abstention means that you are not in front of the court. You are overseas. You are not available for the court to seize a habeas corpus, seize your body. So I find it interesting that he's chilling in Dubai because up until 19... I don't know, was it 2001 or 1991? Costa Rica didn't have an extradition treaty with the US, but in the recent years, Costa Rica has codified an extradition treaty. So if you are convicted of something in the US, they can just put a formal request into the Costa Rican government and Costa Rican boys and blues will come and grab you and send you over. I just found that interesting that Simon's not even spending time in Costa Rica anymore. He's chilling in Dubai. Anyway, right, let's get back to this, right? Because I, I want to get to my point about Simon playing important bank account. But first of all, the prenup, you can ask them to enforce the terms of the prenup. If Simon got money in the bank of Kathmandu, how's the U.S. court? What you going to do? Do an international sanction? How are, first of all, how are you going to find that bank account? Because Kathmandu does not need to tell the federal government who are the account holders. So good luck finding that. Good luck getting that money. 
So already Portia realized, okay, this was a dumb thing because you thought you had $3 million, but baby, you're going to go the same way he owes NetJet $1 million. Baby, you are below NetJet because Simon won't want a private jet again. Okay, so we got that. But an interesting thing that came out about the prenup, about her wanting to uphold this, and this is the funniest thing, Portia Williams is asking the judge to enforce the prenup between her and Simon Gaboria reportedly wants each party to keep their assets to themselves. So now that Portia realizes that that money, right, that she was promised in the prenup is not coming, she wants to make sure that Simon's debts do not become her debts. Now, Por Portia says, and this was in the neighborhood talk, so I'm guessing they paid for placement. I don't know, right? Wants each party to keep their assets to themselves. When you read that, you'd be like, oh, okay. Portia's not a gold digger. First of all, Portia already figured out. We're getting to that in a second. There was no money there. But when they keep their assets separate, the other half of that sentence is you also keep your debts separate. She wants to make sure that all of Simon's debts, right? I don't believe that Portia knew that Simon wasn't paying for that uh, private jet. Even though she used it, I just don't think that she thought that he had gone, would have the audacity, the caucasity to fly for almost three years, private, having chauffeurs, doing all this stuff, and he owed them money, okay? So she wants to keep all debt separate, first of all. Um, also, she wants to keep her money to herself. By doing that, that makes sure that this is Portia pretty much admitting that she knows that that money that she's supposed to be in the prenup is no good. It's also the fact that Portia realized that she has more money than Simon. Why? Because Portia, in a little known thing of this, admitted that she's been the one paying for stuff and Simon owes her money and needs to, needs to. Simon owes her money and needs to pay her back. How do we know this? Well, let's look into the list. Listen, this is according to me, right? Because at the end of the day, I when I saw this, I said, oh, wow. Did Simon take money from her like stood? Or did, some or did he do something illegal with her money? Honestly, you got to think Diddy because this whole thing about the update. Let me pull this up really quick because this is the funniest thing that I've ever, ever, ever seen in my life. Simon deserves, mm, Simon isn't, Simon, Simon don't fear God. Anyway, here we go. It's a page six article. Hold on. Portia is, oh wait, I have a little setup. Hold on y'all. I have a PowerPoint presentation. I almost forgot. Look at me being prepared. Okay. Portia Williams demands a strange husband, Simon Gabodia, not destroy financial records amid divorce. Okay? Not destroy. First of all, how would Portia even know that Simon destroys financial records? Not, not give financial, but she does not want him to destroy financial records. Now, first of all, Portia, he just got that on a PDF. Remember back in the 90s or was it early 2000s where people could like make bank statements for PDF? This is before people realized the power of Photoshop. Anyway, they said the returning Royal Housewives of Atlanta store demanded in court documents obtained by page six that the entrepreneur maintain spare financial records or state, I'm sorry, maintain spare financial records or statements all income records, all tax records, all expense records, all recordings or evidence reflecting relevant conduct by either party or risk facing sanctions. Now for everybody else, people are like, oh, she get into the money. She won her prenup. Baby, this is what you do when somebody owes you money. If I say that we have a prenup and I've never done anything else to ask for some type of sanctions or um, injunction to this letter, financial records or statements. First of all, Portia and Simon have a prenup. I hate to tell you about one of the reasons why people like prenups is when you get divorced, the other person 
has no right to know what's in your checking account. It's none of your business. We agreed that I would give you $300,000, $3 million. I agreed to give you $30 and a two-piece church's chicken meal. That's all you get. That's why people have prenups. When we divorce, you have no right to know what's in my banking account. You have no right to know what's in my checking account. You have no right to my financial records or statements. You have no right to my income records. You have no right to my tax records. You have no right to all expense records, all recordings, and evidence reflecting relative conduct by either party or risk for sanctions. That's what you do when there is no prenup and you decide to go to the mat and you want to get to what's going on with their money. But Portia and one breath said, I want you to uphold the prenup and I want you to reaffirm the judge to reaffirm and tell everybody our assets are private. Our, I'm gonna say, our assets are separate. Your assets are your assets. My assets are my assets. Your debt is your debt. My assets are my assets. So already, although people are like, oh, she getting to the money. No, she's not. Simon owes her money. If her amount that she's on, and also you can't, let's just say that she can go in front of the court and say, well, your honor, I think he's a little scammer and I think he's hiding money. So I want all the accounts frozen until then. The court will say on what purpose? The first thing the court will say is, you know what? You don't have the right to do that because the prenup is the reason to avoid all that. That's why people get prenups. But here's what we'll do. Okay. I'm not going to put this injunction on this person and make them do it because that's illegal. It goes against the prenup. I will ask them to take the money that is owed in the prenup or whatever collateral you plan on using to give that money and you will put it in a third party account. You will put it in an account where it will hold interest where you don't have access to the money. They don't have access to money, but we're showing the court that we got the money. And once that person does it, right? Then the court will be like, yeah, this motion is denied. You have no reason to know any of this about him because you've already signed off that as long as he gives you A, B, and C, you will live scot-free. Now, if that person does not put in that money in escrow, right? Does not put it in an escrow account where it can't be touched, but it's just proof that it exists, right? Then the court will say, you are operating in bad faith. And then your lawyer will say to them, since they're operating in bad faith, Your Honor, we want all these records and we actually want the assets frozen because we are afraid that blah, blah, blah. This can happen. But this is, sorry, but this isn't happening right here because you guys read about it. You can't just do this. Porsche's people made no motion for Simon to put the amount of the prenup in an escrow. The judge did not say, okay, well, he's operating in bad faith. You skipped 20 steps and you went too straight. I want to see all financial records, statements, income records, tax records, all expense records, all recordings, evidence reflecting relevant conduct by either party or risk facing sanctions. What does that mean? One, there is money at play and you need to ascertain. You don't think you're going to get thing, but there's money at play that he needs to pay you. Two, what will any lawyer take away from this? Well, I talked to a few legal eagles and they actually split light on this. These are the type of things you ask for. When you are afraid that somebody has commingled you in some of their foolery, you want to see exactly whose name is on the tax records. Because don't forget, when you lie to the IRS, it don't matter whether you prepared the, uh, uh, the tax return or not. If your signature is on there, then the IRS takes you as being jointly reliable. You can't get up there and be like, well, I never prepared it. It was him. Simon sitting in court, mm, right? Trying to like sneak some de to, uh, daily on tequila from a flask. Why do I think that Simon, be oh wait, no, his, his drink of choice is Don Julio, 1942, right? But all jokes aside, when you sign on financial documents, just like uh, Teresa Judici found out, it doesn't matter whether you did A, B. They, the court says that you have a, you are, have a fiscal, and constitutional duty to read through whatever you are signing. And when you put your John Hank up on, you are saying not only do you agree everything in that is true, but you have also double checked. Ignorance is no excuse of the law. So why is Portia asking for financial records and statements to see where the money's coming from and if she's commingled? 
all income records. Again, Portia has no right to this under the prenup. And they did not make a motion saying that they are afraid that the prenup will not be honored. They're just asking for all income. They're, Portia's now trying to see where Simon money is coming from. All tax records. She wants to see if her name is on that tax record. And if she it was signed on either with her consent or without. I'm guessing without because with her consent, she would know. All expense records. Again, if Simon was using Portia and Portia had a tab running with Simon, baby, 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 please, right? What does that say? She would need to know where the expense records is because she wants to know where he's been spending this money and why he couldn't pay her back. Also, if you look at expense records, it lets you trace money to see what's where for there to be an expense, right? It had to be paid from an account with assets. Portia wants to know where that is. They want all recordings or evidence reflecting relevant conduct by either party. This is where you know Simon was playing in her bank accounts. Or like Fallon said, messing up Portia's credit or getting business lines of credit through Go Naked Hair, pampered by Portia or whatever in order um, to, in order to, uh, uh, for them to live off of. Okay. All recordings or evidence reflecting relevant conduct by either party. So they basically want to know every move Simon made financially. Again, Simon, if you look at these statements and I've talked to a few lawyers, it would lead you to believe that he has in fact been playing in her bank accounts. Why Portia was busy. And this is why they tell y'all, I, this is the one thing that with Portia, and I don't mean to like keep beating a dead horse because, well, yeah, I do. Cause that's what I do best. Right. But let me just say this PSA for any women. Portia always confused me because for most, no, I don't want, it is easy to be a kept woman if you are willing to sacrifice your ego, your pride, um, your self-respect, and you turn the other way if someone's cheating, it is actually pretty easy to be a cat woman. It's just the fact that most women, you know, if he coming home at 4 a.m. smelling like Miss Maxine's perfume, no matter how much you're like, think about the bag, think about the bag, think about the bag. When he walks in, you'd be squaring up like you mother. Right. You'll be squared up no matter how much you're like, nope, think about the bag. You're like, oh, no, 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 no. Like we, we, we about to square up right mentally. I would never condone somebody squaring up with a man or a woman physically. Right. But especially when you have a high profile, because a lot of men want women who are high profile. Fine. Same way women want will be more attracted to famous men. Um, but the issue is. Most women that have ever been kept at any point in your life, you realize very early on, if you're lucky, very late in the game if you're not, that it is a fool's journey. You are literally putting your welfare, your mental health, your physical health, because stress can make you sick, your financial livelihood, you are putting your future in the hands of someone that could get sick of you and move on. And oddly enough, when you are a kept woman, because this society does not value women making homes, even though that's a full-time job, this society does not value stay-at-home moms. This value does not does not value domestic contribution. Um, when it's time for them to kick you out. Even the court will be like, well, what, what did you do? You were just a mom. Like, he got, like, they just don't care. So being a kept woman, we saw what happened to Lisa Hutchinson from Real Housewives of Miami. She was married to a damn near billionaire. And literally, I mean, she bounced back with another billionaire. But the whole point of the matter is, um, it's a risky game. Most kept women are trying to get into their own bag or own hustle. So one... They don't ever got to worry about what's going to happen to them. Two, at least the stress of finances will never be a problem. Three, it just gives them a more rounded life. And four, it makes them feel like you can't treat me any way you want. I don't need you. I appreciate everything you do, but I don't need you. I can leave tomorrow, right? You can put that middle finger, that, that index finger right in the middle of their head. I can leave you tomorrow if I want it, right? Knock that head right on back.
So it was always odd to me that Portia was hustling backwards. You're trying to live the life of an insta baddie, a 20 year old insta baddie. And these 20 year old insta baddies like Jada Wada and Ari had their mind focused on the bags because they'd like, I've already been kept. That is a fool's journey, baby. I want my own money. I want to be my own boss. I want to be my own king. You know what I'm saying? Jada Wade and Ari were kept women. And they said never again. And they built kingdoms out of what they did. Right? They are the prototype. But that's where most of these 20-year-olds are moving. And if somebody's 30 or 40, they already know. Portia's already been a kept woman. And she ended up with zero. And then she went right back to it. So it leads me to believe that if she had this type of stuff, even the way she let Simon buy a house and not put her name on it, it leads me to believe that Portia was not smart about the prenup. Portia did not have her accountant verify anything. Portia did not keep an eye. The fact that you are asking for your husband's financial records or statements, income records, all tax records, tax? How are you asking for tax records unless you think that Simon was doing something behind your back. I'm being dead serious. Because if you're married, you can just ask the IRS. But then again, who knows what his real name is? All expense records. But the one thing that seals it to the fact of you think Simon was playing in your bank account and playing with your company stuff, all recordings or evidence reflecting relevant conduct by either party or risk-facing sanctions, baby. Simon was going all up and down. And, the, and this is the wording you use when you know somebody owes you money. Again, this cannot be the prenup because the prenup is already allotted for. And this, this prey to the court, right, would have not, um, sorry, this prey to the court for relief would have not been worded like this. They would have said, we have doubts that he will fulfill his terms of the prenuptial agreement. We want him to give assurances. The judge will say, yeah, all right, put it in escrow, and then we'll work this out. That's the way you were worded, not like this. This is when someone owes you money, and this is when you think somebody has gotten you into um, some type of fugazi stuff. Let's keep going. And you went right for it, sanctions. It also reveals she and Simon, can we stop calling him Gabodia or Simon? Is that why he put, first of all, what Simon Iori Gabodia? I should have known when I was like, how's it? Mm, anyway, they said her filing also reveals that she and Simon signed a prenuptial agreement on November 17th, 2022, which sets forth each party's separate property interest and marital property interest. How did Simon con her with this one? Because Portia thought that she had worn him down, baby. The Atlanta streets are saying, and I don't know this is true, but let me just say this. Y'all, Portia thought that she was getting Simon. I don't think she realized how much Simon played her. Um, the, the, does anybody know? Class, class, does anybody know what's wrong with this and how Simon played her? And how Portia might end up paying Simon alimony or whatever? Or how Portia, Simon might be entitled to some of Portia's assets. At the very least, Portia might be required to pay half of Simon's debts class. Can anybody look at the screen and tell me what's wrong? Let's put this on the jumbotron. Can anybody look at the screen and tell me what's wrong? Who? Anyone? Am I even in the comments? Hold on, y'all. Okay, I'll just tell y'all. Uh, and let somebody type in really quick. Let me say thank you to the new members. And then I'm gonna see if anybody got the right answer. Cause baby, can anybody tell on the screen what, where Portia messed up? Lena Jackson, thank you so much for becoming a new member. Brittany L, thank you so much for becoming a new member. Tamika Wildflower, thank you so much for becoming a new member. Also, we will be having a members live um, uh, Wednesday, uh, Monday, the Diddy stuff popped up. I'm going live right after this live to talk about the Diddy d documents. I got all the documents. I'll put them on the Summer Jam screen. We're going to talk about section by section because I know that two hour and 30 minute live was a lot for y'all. Um, we're going to talk about a session and section. And baby, I got some more tea about what's going on. Uh, Lady uh, Lembabe, Lembabe, thank you. Uh, Lady Ellen Babe, 
thank you so much for joining the memberships. Also, Tamika Wallflower. Tamika said, Tisa, can you please look into what's going on with Diddy's twin girls? Tough news is reporting that the girls have run away from home because Diddy is scary and violent. CPS needs to be called to check on those kids. Yes, I will look into that. I'm going to go live after this to talk about Diddy and situation. Also, uh, Seiko Online, thank you for becoming the newest member of the title tells. Okay, let's see if anybody got an answer. Hold on. Um, let's see. Also, that's a good question. Simon's cars. Did I know he got a lot of cars. Where those cars be at? They not at Porsche's house. Fallon, or was it Jalen? Somebody said a while back that all of Simon's cars are registered to Florida. That Simon's cars are not in his name. A lot of people are saying that Simon is the middle man. Simon buys things for wealthy individuals, holds them. To, I don't know, whatever. The point is, yeah, rented, unpaid, not in your name. Somebody said, what Simon stretches the board out as long as he can. Going to be like, can you it's going to be worse. I can't wait till Simon's ass go live. I can't wait. Especially because Porsche is doing all this stuff. Hold on, y'all. Let me see. Let's see. Let's see. Does anybody know why Portia messed up? Ah, no. Let me tell you how Portia messed up. No, in Georgia, no. When it comes to credit card, that's different because you enter into a contract. In Georgia, marital debt is equitably distributed. It doesn't not, you don't keep it separate. It's equitably distributed, but that's not the point. Simon, Portia thought she was getting to the bag with Simon. The problem with this prenuptial is Simon can actually make a motion to have this prenup thing thrown out saying it was signed under duress. When did Portia get married? She got married Thanksgiving weekend. When is that? November 22nd, November 23rd. When was Thanksgiving for 2023? When did they sign this prenup? November 17th. Portia and Simon agreed to a prenup less than seven days before the ceremony. The same way Jenny Mai is asking for the prenup to be invalidated because it was signed too close to the wedding. I believe Jenny Mai signed it within a week of the wedding. It's the same way Portia, but more importantly, Simon, can make the argument that this prenup should be invalidated because it was signed too close to the wedding and they had spent millions. They had families, friends. It was a point of national interest. And Simon felt, Simon felt pressure to sign. If Portia, again, everybody assumed that it was Portia that might contest the prenup because Portia thought Simon had all the money. But y'all, Simon is the broke one. Simon is the one that will want that uh, prenup invalidated so that Portia will be on the hook for half of his debt. And when they go after him for judgment, they're going after them. And even if Portia gets a divorce in three months, all the debt incurred while they were married, and this includes creditors that come and file in the court for a debt, Portia is liable. Tell me that mofo didn't see her coming and this wasn't the scam of the nation. All the time, everybody thought that Portia was the one that had to, oh, well, I'm going to invalidate the prenup. I'm doing this. And Portia probably thought she was so slick signing because don't forget she went through this with Cornell. So she, our lawyer explained to her when you sign a prenup, if it's within too close, you can always make an argument that you want the prenup invalidated because it was signed under duress. So Portia probably thought she had that ace in her pocket. Little did she know that Simon was like, <clears throat> she's going to pay for half my debt. Isn't it odd that the person that has money in the relationship always asks the court to reaffirm the prenup? It's always the person that has money. When Jeezy, right, was separate, the person that has more money. When Jeezy was separating from Ginny, the first thing he did was say, Your Honor, because they knew the prenup was signed too close. It's a little gray area. It can be argued. He said, Your Honor, 
I want you to reaffirm and reinforce this prenup. And Jenny said, Mofo, you must be out of your mind. Uh-uh, I want this prenup invalidated. So now we got Portia reinforcing the prenup. And Simon could possibly be moving to get the prenup invalidated. That's why the lawyers are already working preemptively and they want to know his financial records, statements, income records, tax records, expense records, recorded, ah, 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 not just to know what he's been doing, but also if he does try to make Portia re invalidate that prenup, not to get any of Portia's money, but to make sure that Portia is on the hook for half his debt. Y'all, when Simon and Fallon were divorcing, they didn't go through all this. And Simon actually had more money in the bank back then than they had now. He had about 3.3, I believe, because that's what he uh, sunk in to his house. That's a whole different other lie. We'll talk about that later. Baby, again, stop thinking that Portia is Kaiser Sosa from the usual suspects because she is not. Baby, like. Portia got scammed. She got scammed on a molecular level. She got scammed by somebody that is suing the federal government. She got scammed. Don't fear God. She got scammed by somebody that was riding around in a rented, like not even rented, timeshare, fractional timeshare, making her think that was his. And on top of that, he ain't paid, he only paid one payment in three years. She got scammed by someone that had a chef make a diagram of a Costa Rica mansion that he led her to believe was hers. Y'all, you really think that this man and everything he knows about scamming wouldn't make sure, even though Portia thought that she was like, it was a fight to get him to find a prenup. He did it all the show just to make sure that they signed the prenup on November 17th. Now, how do we know this might have been part of the plan? Well, usually what happens with the prenup is one party has already signed it and they waiting for the other one to sign. That's why in the court documents, it will say so-and-so signed it on, I don't know, August 8th. Baba -ba signed it on November 17th. The court records, records say that both Portia and Simon signed it on November 17th. They can both make the argument that either one of them did not have time to accurately think through and reflect on entering in. Again, the person with money is the person that usually asks for it to be reaffirmed. From what we're saying, Portia is now admitting to the world through this, um, through this filing that Portia admits that she knows right now she has more money to protect than Simon. And if she's admitting that she has more money to protect than Simon, it goes into that thing. Hold on, my lens is fuzzy. Fuzzy. If she agrees that she has more money to protect than Simon, then this goes into the saying that how much of the scamming did you know? How much were you diving into your bank account to perpetrate a fraud and protect your lifestyle? Or I'm sorry, not your lifestyle. You literally ran through your money for your wedding, for this, for that. Also, you can let Fallon think that she lost something. And I said it once, I said it again. No one on this earth, unless somebody is putting you in the ground or treating you like Diddy or this and that, no one from this earth is going to walk away that easy from half $500 million and a man that loves you, respects you, and is all about family. Nobody is that stupid, especially even how Simon likes to say to sleep with the help. I know he thought that she was dragging Fallon, but baby, that says to me as a woman, that says something about you because I know women and I like women. I'm not an anti-girl. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm all y'all know me. I'm always like, run his pockets up. The child, what? He live in a $50 million mansion. He better be paying a million dollar month in child support. Like I'm all for like, oh no, 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 no. Women deserve because I understand what, listen, I'm not getting into the gender wars, but no, 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 no. Y'all see me. I just know that women, even if they are, they not the best of character, nobody walks away from that type of money so easily. Fallon didn't try to fight the prenup. She didn't try to do this shit. She walked away from Simon and didn't even care. Didn't care. That should have been the first clue that that money wasn't what 
Portia thought it was. So Fallon walked away and didn't look back. She didn't look back. Living paycheck to paycheck and arguing with Jalen was a better option than being with Simon. That should have told us exactly what Simon actually had. But Portia ain't see that. She just thought that she had, you know, Fallon was like, she picked this out, but Fallon put down. And, you know, she probably was like, oh, Fallon just a stuck up, got pretty girl privilege. She don't, mm -mm. Anyway, right? They said that Portia is requesting the prenup be enforced. Remember I said the person that got more money is always the one that requests that. She also requested that Simon pay for her legal fees. Portia, and why? Why is she requesting that? Because she is anticipating that Simon perhaps could challenge the prenup. At the very least, if Simon refuses to turn over paperwork, she don't got to worry about paying for the lawyers. So uh, Portia's attorney, Randall Kessler, also added that, the, that Portia is hopeful that she and Simon will reach an agreement settling all issues between them. This was released with paper, page six, baby. Portia, again, this goes into the fact of, and I will stand by this, what Portia knew, did Portia know? Because baby, think about it, right? Simon, if Portia, to me, it sounds like she's basically threatening Simon, that she will let that chop a sing and let everybody know what she knows. Everybody. Because at the end of the day, this is a threat to me. You're hopeful. We can reach an agreement settling all issues between them. But she's letting them know, but baby, if we can't, I will let all your business out. Again, I know what Portia's doing and she's trying to protect herself. But Portia, to me, you're low-key dry snitching on yourself, letting us know that at you're letting us know that at the end of the day, right? At the end of the day, Portia, what's going on? You knew what was going on because how would you not have it? How would you have anything to hold over Simon's head if you were just like the wife that was just quiet and this, that, and a third? Now, meanwhile, Simon, as can be expected, is playing in Portia's face. Simon is saying, I would mean, like to say I love my wife and I don't want to leave. Now, here's the thing that would have made me mad about that, right? Because at the end of the day, all Simon is showing is that he thought Portia is a lick. He thinks Portia is stupid. And he thinks by literally say, you know, Simon probably, because he's an old head, he probably like making like a mix CD or something for Portia uh, to listen to with some boys to men. Please don't go away from me. What's that song with boys to men? Please don't go away from me, right? He's probably making a mixtape on a CD, burning a CD for her to play. Talk about some end of the road. He don't even know that people make a Spotify playlist now, Apple playlist, baby. He burning the CD right now. Again, this lets you know the level of dumbness and things that Portia fell for. That Simon thinks that there's still a chance that they can actually get together. Simon still thinks that he can pull her. He's talking about, I'm not divorced from my wife until it's final. You ain't feel that way about Fallon. I love my wife and I want her to come back. I'm going to keep fighting for her. Simon really think he got the right one. And Simon really doing the dummy ooky do ooky woo oosh gosh bagosh on Portia. Again, if that was the case and Portia was this mastermind, why would Simon think that? Again, y'all got to ask these questions. Well, I got one more slide. Hold on, y'all. Y'all got to ask these questions. So Portia out here now telling Simon, you better not do that mess to me that you did with Fallon. Now, I find it funny. I find it interesting. I find it funny. Not funny, ha-ha, but funny, hmm, interesting. That, remember when it was supposed to be their anniversary, Portia's anniversary with Simon? And Simon was, or Simon's birthday, and they were supposed to be celebrating. And Portia had spent all this money on Simon's birthday. It was some big event. And Simon got on Instagram and started attacking Fallon and doing this and doing that. And every time Simon would attack Fallon, Portia would be right next to him on her feed, laughing and throwing subs at Fallon and doing this and that. Again, this song got nothing to do with Portia or Fallon. It's the fact that, baby, I remember I said, you sure this man like you? Because it sounded like he conning you. Because I wish 
I would have just put together a lavish birthday weekend for my man. And I wish I would have flown his five friends out. That should have been the first thing that he was a little scammer. Because how are you worth 40 million? And I said it back then. You only got five friends that will attend your birthday party. We see from Twitter, there's a million flunkies that will lick the boots of power on the hopes that they'll get a pat on their head or maybe an extra $50 in their uh, pocket. People that have that much money have so many hanger-ons parasites, people that just want to be down to try to see what they can get out of it. Portia could have had that whole thing. The fact that you can only have five people there, what does that tell you? People don't mess with you and you don't got as much money as you make because there's a bunch of users that will hear that you got uh, a $1 million and they'll be at your party, you know, talking about some, go Simon, go Simon. But it let, it's just ironic that you were right there keep keying it up with Simon while he was literally harassing and let me just say this because it never sat right with me harassing and humiliating and taunting and asking social media to bully what was a pregnant woman i know that went over everybody's head i know and i know the timeline between fallon and jalen it was janky right but honestly it went over everybody's head but not Porsches, because you're a woman and you've been pregnant. You are inciting an online campaign for people to bully, harass, smear, mock, and humiliate a woman that was with child. That was some nasty work. And I get it. When you are a Black woman, even the own, our own community does not hold grace for pregnant women. But the fact that Portia, you not only were you pregnant, but you went through a harsh pregnancy when Dennis was playing you and humiliating you and you had to go through. And, and at that time, we all were like, Dennis is the devil. Leave Portia alone. Let her have a peaceful pregnancy. I thought that was some nasty, nasty work. It's funny. Again, I don't believe that karma is like some random force that they hear you giggling or snorting or taking pleasure. Karma don't got time for that. Baby, like babies die in the street. Like karma don't got time for that. I do believe that karma is a natural consequence of all your actions catching up to you. And the fact that Portia was helping Simon, not just helping, but delighting in it. Because I don't know, maybe she felt like si uh, Fallon was who she wanted to be naturally. I don't know, honestly. I really don't know. But it's funny how the same person that you were kicking and helping harass a heavily pregnant woman and taunt everybody. And I don't care if she was pregnant by the help. I don't care. If she, I don't care. I don't care if Simon walked in and Portia, I mean, I'm sorry. I don't care. A child is innocent. And any woman that got a child growing in their belly, baby, I'll wait till you give birth. This can all wait until you give birth. Ain't nothing I got to say, nothing I can dig through, nothing I can discover worth upsetting the peace of an innocent child. I will never, I don't care what y'all say. Ain't not, I don't care what y'all say. It does like, uh, we can call her a ho 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 when the baby's born. We can add up timelines when the baby's born. But until the baby's born, you are correct. You know, people are like, oh, what do you think? You got to get out of jail free card because you're pregnant? Yes, that is exactly what you have when you are pregnant. Here's your get out of jail free card. How many months are you? Seven. All right, we're going to catch that fade. I'll see you in about, you seven months pregnant. I'll see you in about five months for you to catch this fade. You see what I'm saying? Anyway, Portia was kicking, And now Portia is less than 15 months later on the internet threatening Simon that he better not try that dumb ish with her that he did with Fallon. And you know what the thing is? Simon's not dumb. And I do believe, this is my opinion. I do believe that Simon is going to um, start his shenanigans in the next week or two. Why? Because I think that with Portia, I think Portia always had plans to divorce Simon. I, I really do, right? Um, for whatever reason. Uh, maybe it's smelling his breath. Maybe it's looking at his face. I don't know. Remember what? You know when Portia decided that she was going to leave Simon? <laughs> Remember when Portia was going out of her way to show how she's a good woman and she spoiled Simon and she was going on 
go put pictures of her giving Simon a pedicure at home. Literally digging cheese toast out of his seat. Giving that man what cater did you playing in the background? Yo, I think when she was literally holding that gnarled dinosaur foot up and doing the thing, and it's like, I think what Portia, that's what Portia decided. Yeah, I'm out, right? I think that's what she heard that voice in her head. Now, you might be wondering how I got to this. And it rewinds to Portia giving Simon little winky winks in the cupboard, looking through Fallon's refrigerator while Fallon and the kids are overseas enjoying their lives. Yo, that's where Portia probably decided she was divorced in this mofo. But again, I do believe, but also I think Portia thought that when she left, if something happened, like she was with Dennis, like she was with Cartel, I'm on national TV, so I have a platform and I can say anything you, um, I want to say about you. And even though you might get in the blogs, even though you might do Instagram Live, I mean, let's be real. How many people watch YouTube? How many people catch Instagram Lives? The average person does not keep up with what Portia and Simon are doing. So I think Portia thought, if I go on Real Housewives, I'll have the bigger platform. So no matter what he does, you can't say anything. Just like with Fallon, she had the bigger platform. The only problem is Real Housewives of Atlanta are not going to be filming. They are not going to be filming for, well, they might be filming, but they won't be, um, what do you call it? They will not be, uh, what do you call it? They, they won't have a season for a minute. So Portia won't have her platform. So right now, Simon and Portia are just as powerful. And something tells me in a week or two, Simon's going to start letting little things out about Portia. And the way he's going to do that is he's going to be in his comment section liking things and recycling things. Y'all, baby, if that's not a thinly veiled threat, I don't know what is. You talking about you better not do me like Fallon, baby. One thing about those tables, they going to always turn, especially when you come with clean hands. We tried to say something. I don't care what anybody says. God does not bless you with other people's husbands and wives. God does not bless you with other people's downfall. God blesses you with your blessings. You know what I'm saying? And now we see, or at least the God I worship, and now we see, right? Portia is now free to find the blessing that God actually has set out for her. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know what I'm saying. It's not even a point. I heard somebody say Portia went and listened. I don't even think it's the point that Portia went and listened. Um, I honestly think that Portia just didn't care. She didn't care. Again, she didn't care. Portia, listen, you cannot. Here's the thing. I remember Claudia Jordan said this a long time ago, and she was right. The things that Portia did when she did with Fallon, the, 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 the cheating, the lying, the flagrant, you just can't be doing those things without completely destroying yourself. So when you do decide to make that move, you got to make sure it's secure. Because if not, it's a lot of consequences. Portia, I don't understand. It has proven she will. And don't forget the way she treated her family on Portia family values when she thought she didn't need them anymore. The way she treated her one cousin, was it Lonnie or whatever, where she was like crying and Portia was rolling her eyes, didn't care. Portia showed who she was. And when she thought she had money, she felt free to drop the nice act and treat everybody like crap. OK, she felt free. So. I say all this to say, when someone shows that they don't give a F about themselves, they will do anything they need to, to get ahead. And they will sacrifice and destroy anything. That's fine, baby. Go chase your dreams. But you cannot expect people to feel sorry for you. And at the end of the day, Portia wanted this. She plotted this. She lied for this. She schemed for this. She harassed a, pre in my opinion, helped organize an online campaign to talk trash. She went on Tamara Hall and talked trash. Maybe. Again, I'm not saying Fallon's innocent. I'm just saying when everybody was kikiing that Fallon got what she deserved, okay, fine. But now Portia getting not what she deserved, but what she fought for. Because, baby, she fought for that man. Um, 
Uh, anyway, John Edburn said, my fave Tisa. What's up, John? Thank you so much for the generous super chat. Uh, Tater Bees, thank you so much for becoming a member. Yo, Trish Trish, Portia's story is a perfect lesson for gold diggers. Listen, if any gold diggers DM me, y'all, get the background check. Hi, if you think he's worth five million pounds, Hire a private investigator. See what that man's up to, who that man, what that man's doing, who that man is doing, and what they're into. At this day and age, when wives go down with their husbands, baby, it's not enough. You can't be like, back then they didn't make the wives go down because they were like, oh, you're just a dumb housewife. They don't believe that anymore. Wives go down with their husbands. You got to know who you're, at least go to their office and ask, excuse me, um, why is the printer on the floor? I, I just wondering, is this typical of a $500 million company? Oh, that's what they do in Nigeria? Let me Google this real quick. Homegirl Healer, thank you so much for the super chat. She said, y'all better start making these uh, trans rich ninjas show you where they're... Hey, here's the thing. Sorabelle Martinez, thank you so much for becoming a YouTube member. Listen, it's the last thing I'll say, Homegirl Healer. I, I love your Abby. Oh, you got that sage going. Listen, if someone is asking to combine lives with you. One of the key things after you talk about what's your views on kids? What's your views on family? Do you believe the family should always be around? Do you like to find out that you see like what's your view? What's your views on morality on this? On uh, After you see that your views align and you align with that person's character and you respect where they come from and they respect with yours, when you come, and that should be in the dating stage. When you decide to combine lives with someone, you should have free reign to see what is in their accounts, just like they should have free reign to know what you do, how much you make, what your debt is, and how much you earn. And if you feel like it, may I see a bank statement? That's it. And again, the bank statement, you can do what you cannot. But if you are being asked to sign a prenup, it is your legal duty to ask to see bank statements, asset statements, tax returns. You need to know what you're entering in. And if someone doesn't want to show you that, then one, who the F did I marry? Uh, season six. But also, if you do not trust me enough to see what's going on in your accounts and your financial world, why would I ever want to combine lies with you? Because you already tell me you don't see me as your rib, your equal partner. Do you see what I'm saying? If you don't think I have access to that, then I don't think you deserve to have access to my body. Because I actually think that your bank accounts is less than you have an access to me. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's kind of like, it's not even about gold diggers. It's just like if someone's coming to you saying you signed this prenup, can I know what I'm signing? You don't want to let me know what you have? Okay, clearly we're not where we are, you know? Um, yes. Listen. Anyway, let me get you guys. I'm going live about Diddy right after this, probably in like 10 minutes. I got some juice on the shooting. I have the juice on the way. They're trying to say that it's not Stevie J. Baby, Sean Hawley is at it again. They are starting with their campaign of lies and manipulation. But baby, y'all wanted somebody to come out and take this mofo down. And now we have this person. Okay. And this is what it looks like. This campaign of misinformation, lies, internet, all this other stuff. Y'all listen, um, uh, Alana Jackson, Brittany L, Tamika Wildflower, Lady LM, babe, uh, Tamika Wildfire, thank you for blessing me again. Sika Online, John Edmonds, Tater Bees, Trish Trish, thank you so much. The Homegirl Healer and Sora Bob Martinez, thank you so much for supporting. Members only will be on Wednesday. I, you know what? I think on the members only, if you guys sign up, or even if you didn't, right? But if you're a member only, uh, I'm going to break the news to y'all first with receipts about where Simon get his money from. And it, baby, it's bad. Portia should be worried. And then I'll go live later on and bring it to the general public. But y'all will get that tea first. All right, you guys. Thank you so much. I'll be live in about 10 minutes on Diddy. Join me if you can. If not, mwah, no bars. All right, y'all. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.